This episode is about how I did the radiator plumbing, installed the door shocks, and as you can tell, the body's been taken off. And that was a chore in itself, but it made it much easier to do all the plumbing and work on the doors without the body uh, in place. So I've installed 150 pound shocks to begin with, which seemed to work really well. Of course, with the regulators and windows and inner door cards, all that may change, but at least my doors are functional now. Uh, radiators required a little bit of work, which I'll go I'll get into all of that and I'll show you how I did the radiator plumbing and how I did the doors. So let's get started. With the engine in and the radiators full, the back of the car is much heavier than the front. I did take precautions and tied the front down to the lift to prevent it from tipping. With the body off, I could now weld nuts to the door frame to make it easier to mount the latch assemblies. One thing I had to modify is the passenger side pull. Since both latches have cable pulls, the driver side pull is located inside the cabin. The passenger side pull would be facing the inside of the door frame. Fortunately, there is another release lever that I can attach a cable to to allow the pull into the cabin like the driver's side. Currently, I have a piece of string to release it manually. My son Chad got me a 3D printer for Father's Day, and I will see about making some attachments to route the cables. Okay, beginning work on the radiator plumbing. Now uh, the LS1 has an inch and a half outlet and inch and a quarter inlet. So, drill some holes for my piping. And essentially, it's going to go in here, out here, through this tube, which I'll talk more about in a second. Come out on this side, and then this He's going to go up here to the inlet and then down here that piece there will come up here to a radiator fill cap that will go here, go around and be connected over there to the return line. Now, I bought a stick of inch and a half ID aluminum tube but it happens to be schedule 40 which is pretty thick. And the pipe will fit on there, as you can see here. Trip to O'Reilly's, went in the back and said, I need to look at all kinds of different radiator hoses to see what I can come up with. So I think this is what I'm going to be using. Now this actually has some new stuff, and those that don't have tags on it are things that were left over from my Diablo build. I've got a heater eliminator, and then a inch and a half to inch and a quarter adapter all kinds of rings and a overflow catch can so now just need to start assembling well but it will work so here we come from the water pump out to the firewall there's a reducer from inch and a half to inch and a quarter goes into the top of this radiator goes out the bottom of that radiator through a tube it comes out there and feeds the top of this radiator goes out the bottom of this radiator back into a fill cap that then goes back into the return now, Added on a overflow catch can, and I had to remove the radiator cap so I only have one pressure release point in the system. Now my aluminum welding is not the greatest in the world, but it should hope work. So next we'll try putting some radiator, or just try putting some regular water in it first and check for leaks. I started the process using a rod to determine the length of the shocks when the door was open and when it was closed. 
there's only about a four inch difference between open and closed. I purchased two 15 inch by 150 pound springs off of Amazon and a pack of four ball joints for less than $30. The package on the ball joint said that there are 5 16 by 18 inch threaded studs. I bought a 5 16 by 18 inch tap. Amazon lied. They are actually 8 millimeter by 1.25 studs. Learned that after tapping the hinge and snapping the stud off. After removing the snap stud, I brought an 8 millimeter by 125 tap, returned the broken one, and got a replacement that works fine with the proper tap. The package is still mislabeled. Okay, working on the shock mounts. I got some ball ends here that are an inch long and because these are 150 pound springs there's going to be a lot of force and that thin wall tubing was not going to be enough so I've added a plate on here and threaded it for these to go in and then that'll be a nice secure fitting for the ball joint. Okay, working on the door shocks, I've got them mounted up here on the top part of the hinge and then I've actually set the body on jack stands to make sure it's level. Then I measured up from the floor to the tip of the, the door and then that determined where I needed to put in my ball joints. Now, I went through and adjusted so that both doors are the same height off of a fl equal floor, but because my hinges are built just a little bit differently, there's a slight variation in where the mounting point's going to be for the shocks. So what I did is I drilled a hole where the shocks are going to go through. It's going to actually come up through here, through this shock, through this hole. And now I just have to fabricate some mounting points for the front of the frame. Down here. Now that line is where the shock needs to go. So I'll put a tab on the outside here because that other plate's going to sit on top and hopefully that will work. Okay, tabs are welded on. Doors work good. Now those are 150 pound springs. Maybe Need more than that. Once I get everything done. But yeah. Looks good. Other side. are technically functional. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate it if you would, and be sure and turn on your post notifications. Thank you for watching.